Jesus for being amongst us, opening our eyes to see the marvelous light into which you brought us a redemption. And now, Lord, we ask that the light that is also inside of us but the work of the Father might together with the light we are immersed in cause the word of God which you show us to go forth in the fullness of the power of the blood of the Lamb to achieve for us in the arena of life and the raging battle the things that are destined to come to pass. Thank you, Father. Let your hand rest upon us mightily. And may you continue to lay your hands upon us and all who hear these words. Until a people arise in whom is the fire power of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. You will recall that the subject matter before us is the word basis for the triumphant use of the blood of the Lamb. The word of triumphant is very deliberately chosen. Because there are two words that set forth the character of the believer's service, a service of war. In fact, in the Old Testament, service and war in the Hebrew, where the context admitted, are from the same root. So you have militancy and you have triumphant. And uh, of course, the idea many have is that we will continue to struggle on earth, winning some battle, losing many, and uh, again winning. And sometimes the status quo is, uh, is uh, maintained. But when they die physically and are buried and go to heaven, automatically it becomes the church triumphant. So church triumphancy is a reality they say beyond the veil. But so long as one is on earth, we can only talk about militancy. You win some, you, you fail some. And of course, every battle is really with a confused noise. But this battle of the kingdom is with a very sure prospect of winning all the time. Blessed be God, yet uh, uh, Paul who always causes us to what? Triumph in Christ Jesus. And we began to see that what will make us triumphant is not what God will do in the future, but what God has already done, respecting what we are, who we are, and what privileges are ours in Christ Jesus. And we call this new creation realities. They are realities that transcend human understanding. But we have the Spirit of God and are able to understand all that. Because Jesus said, if you are born from above, you can see, appreciate, relate, and fellowship with the kingdom of God. John 3.3. 3. So, of course, this capacity is installed in us as we also see in 2 Corinthians 4.6. Now, we continue. We understand then that it is not what we shall be that is needed for victory over the adversary. What we shall be is, has to do with taking more of the image and likeness of Christ, not to defeat the enemy. The beginning of our spiritual education is to walk in victory over the adversary because it's already defeated. Solomon fought no battle, giving it a perspective. Because God has given rest to David round about from all his enemies. 
He fought no battle, but his kingdom was a great expanse. And both himself and all Israel lived in the good of what is supplied from the nation, as it is written. Each man under that age dwelt under his vine and under his uh, fig tree. We are a type of Solomon. For Christ the greater David has conquered for us and we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that loves us. So the truth principles that enable us to see the power of the blood at work in the arena of life and in the raging battle until the enemy is completely taken off the earth and humanity is brought back to the Lord our God. The human race is brought back to the Lord our God. That glory, that glory belongs to what we already have. Amen? What was set aside is what Satan caused. And that is the limit of his power. When that is set aside, he is also set aside. All the causes, sin, and character traits that follow the fallen man are taken away in Christ. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. And there, there are six principles of truth that we picked. They form, they vitally form the word basis for the transferred use of the blood. Others are there, but they can be resolved into these six. And in fact, even the next three is like um, a prism, a triangular prism. They are interconnected. And uh, we don't have something for the board now, but nothing lost. You have the next three principles of truth which will be taken together. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not I would be, but what? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That is an explosive truth. It is the mainstay from a given standpoint of all of the new creation of reality. We are what we are because of a status we enjoy. We are citizens of heaven. Not shall be, but we are now. And our supplies come from that realm. Our commonwealth is in heaven. From whence we continue to see Christ coming to us in the medium of the word and of the spirit. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So the next three uh, uh, principles of truth that together with other three form the core scriptures for the new creation realities that we are talking about that enable us to move in the power of the blood of Christ. Remember, and overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And we say these are not two things even though the, in, you have the conjunction, uh, the word and connecting the, the two, but they, they are not two of different kinds, of different sort, but two of the same sort, one immersed in the other. Amen? So, ah, what is the word that gives the basis of our testimony? Is a knowledge of what the Lord has done, being the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world in his triumph over the domain of darkness. So the two are one. So these are the three. Uh, are the, the one, the first one is um, the righteousness of God in Christ. Is, we shall just go through that. Then the next one is, I am a just man. Me, here. Yeah, I'm a just man. And because I'm just, the Lord does not keep away anything from me. All of him is for me. God is for me. Not just the things of him. God is for me. Never against me. I'm a just man. So I have a right to be kept alive. Life is my portion. Glory. Life is my portion. I live in him. So I live. Glory. I have right to life. For Adam... In the day you shall eat of the fruit of this tree, where I commanded thee that thou shalt not eat. In dying ye shall die. He had a dying life. 
but I'm, I'm having a living life. Woo! The English instructor will, will put a red line under it. Living life. What does that mean? But the spiritual man understands. He had a dying life, Adam. But I have a living life. I've come that you may have life. And have it abundantly. And have it more abundantly. He continues to grow. Until we can say. When this. Referring to. To your whole person. When this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. There shall come to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up of life. So we live and continue to live until we enter into life. Glory. More can be said about that. But that belongs to another day. So I am a just man. And so have right to life. I'm not living miserably on earth. I have right to the blessings of life in all spheres. Having enough of everything in all spheres to live by. And a little, at, at least a little more to spare in all things. Physical, li but literal, spiritual, and literal. Amen? I am having the right to life. I am just. Look at me. I am a just man. And I have right to life and the blessings of life. Amen. This truth principle flows from Romans 1.17. In fact, key in from the 16th verse, it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? It is the good news that tells me what Christ has done. Say, know ye not. And Paul begins to instruct the believer concerning things they ought to know. So, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, sorry, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is what? The power of God. Not that it contains the power of God, but it is itself the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes it. To those who have been hearing things that relate to it, and to those who have never heard the sound, to them that are near, to them that are far off. Why? Because it tells us how to be loosed from the sphere that God has rejected. The sphere of enmity against God. To the realm of friendship with God. For therein is the, in the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed through faith. For faith as it is written. The just, by, by the same faith that made him just, because Romans 5 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God. We are friends of God, brought into intimate fellowship with God. The just shall, by that same faith that made him just, live and enjoy life. Amen? So that is, I'm a just man. Who else is a just man? You, each and every one of you. Is just. I hear somebody say, What you say, you're a just man? Say that God may be justified. Amen. Amen. Romans 3 24, 25, 26 says that they will see even practical evidence that you live in certification when they continue to examine you. Amen. God's faith in you will be vindicated. You are a just man. I'm a just man. Anyhow, we move quickly to the next. It, 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 to, to, along with it, so much comes, but we move. The righteousness of God is our status. It is our citizenship. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So, the next is, I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Amen? What spiritual blessings? It doesn't mean when we think about the things of the spirit and that the things of the, of, of the kingdom of God, of the things of the light that shall come, the future inheritances, then I'm blessed with that. No. Spiritual blessings means that I am blessed with blessings which are mine by Christ Jesus. I'm fed to my understanding by the Holy Spirit. 
made me, making me to see the locations of these blessings in the scriptures. The heavenly places are in the scriptures. Could you all say it? The heavenly places of the stored blessings are in the scriptures. God makes me to see them by the Spirit. If it is written and is promised to be mine by Christ Jesus, then it is mine. Glory to God. I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. So I'm able to operate a gospel account. Why do I call it a gospel account? All things are there. But your desire will create a deep interest in what you need. And that will prompt your faith to ask for and receive it. Not all you have in the bank you need to collect when you go to the bank. But you have a mind on what you want to do and you go collect it. But all things are there for you. To be used and left unused for another day as you choose. So it's a gospel account. If you get it, say amen. amen. So I have right to operate my gospel account. I go. When I sign my check, the banker gives me what I ask for. Because it's already there. I'm credited with all spiritual blessings. They are located in, script, in the scriptures all over. Amen? They are in different realms, heavenly places. But they are both in the old and in the new. So I ask, where are the blessings stored? And you will say to me, it is in the word of God. Then you say, why do you say so? Because blessing means speaking well concerning someone. To eulogize, to, to, to speak goodly intents concerning someone. And describing your feelings towards that person and your intentions for that person, that is blessing. So the Lord, through the prophet says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. The thoughts of good are not of a evil to give you a future and an expected end. And in Ezekiel, about the 36 verse, when he describes these blessings in a measure, he said, the house of Israel shall, because of these things I say I will do for them, inquire of me. So there is the asking and receiving dimension of operating our gospel accounting account. The same faith that makes us just and, and, and thus blessed will enable us and cash what we need. Desire is an empire. Once this, your desire is there, you will get. The Bible says, with that so ever the soul of your feet shall tread upon that I have given unto you. But what does it say? It should say from that end of your inheritance to that end of your inheritance is yours. But with that so ever the soul of your feet shall tread upon I have given you. So there is a freshly encountered asking and receiving. But all has been given to us. Do you understand that? Amen. So you come to Joshua chapter C, 6. And there's going to be a battle. And the Lord says, I think Joshua 6, 2. Could you please put it on the board? Joshua 6, 2. Say, see, I have given these people into your hand. Before the first fight. Why? What is given is what determines what will result in the battle. Repeat after me. What is given determines what results. I have been given all things. So I can take that which I desire. Amen. And the Lord said to, unto Joshua, See, I have given into the hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. What? I have given into thy hand glory. Why? Because they have come with the sole of their feet to Jericho. That is the sphere of their new desires. And God gives to them. Amen? When they go to another place, they say, see, I have given you. Not that I will give to you, but what? 
I have given you this a renewing in the in the event of time. That's why Hebrews 4, 14, 15, 16 should be taken to heart. He is exalted above. Nothing can stop you from having what he has given you. He says he is touched with the feeling of your infirmities. And he has gone through all that you are as a man without faith. So he's able to give mercy. And you'll be able to find grace and find help at that time of need. When your desire clips or clicks with the truth of scriptures, you see it, then it can be yours. That is why Mark eleven twenty four comes ahead of Mark eleven twenty three. Can you put, please put these two verses uh, and then we will come back to all of these things and I would like to pick it from that point because that's very good. Therefore I say unto you whatever what things whoever ye desire that also, if, if, if you can do without a particular thing you will not be, you aggressively take hold of it. If you can do without it then but if you must have it because it is yours you will create the time to wash down, go to the bank, put in your check, and draw the money. Is that not so? That is the business. So even in the physical, you must be, you must give attention to your desire. So whatever things you desire, desire comes first before prayer. Prayer is secondary. Desire is first. Primary, whatever these things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. Why? Because they are already, you are already blessed with them. It is in your gospel account. But the things you desire now are the things you want to take to hand. Whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. Glory. Believe that you receive them. That's how faith acts. Is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence in your inside of things not seen. Hallelujah. So what you do? When this transaction between you and God has been concluded, then you speak to it. The basis of the victory is the testimony which the word of God gives us power to make. And we overcome. In the arena of life, whether in battle or individual situation, we overcome anything and everything by the blood of the Lamb and by what? The word of, of our testimony. So we begin to speak. And that's where verse 23 comes in. Verse 23 says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, but you've told the Lord... You want that mountain moved. When needs that appear to be unobtainable. These are mountain, but you desire them. Remember Caleb said, give me this mountain. It's a property of faith that you can ask for things promised in scriptures. And look to God to have them. And stay with your confessions of truth. This truth principle, because they are full of power to trigger the light in you and the light round about you to obtain that result. Very I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this man, be thou removed and be thou cast into the, into the sea. I shall not doubt in his heart because you have received it. You receive with the heart. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. That's the sphere of receiving. But possession is an outward thing. I shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, shall come to pass. There may be a time element, but ultimately, what you ask for will be given you. And blessed is he that believes it. And you shall not make haste. For what God says, you will get it. He that believes it does not make haste. It's not confounded. Believe those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have. 
he shall have. You receive in the spirit, you have in your possession. Whatsoever you keep saying. That is the, the force of the word keep saying. Now, in relation to this, the fact that at every time of need, we can hold on to him. We are resolving this into uh, everyday life, but we know it is also applicable in the raging battle as we force the enemy to give up the human race and go into the place that he shall be put called the bottomless pit. The, this house of sons shall see to it in the name of Jesus. Natural weaknesses only turn on the head. When, when, when you seem that you believe and yet you do not believe, it turns up the Lord's head. It begins to give you witness that the, what we are looking for is yours. You know, as Abraham moved closer to the realization of the promise, the frequency of divine visitation increased. What he did not receive, all he received maybe in 23 years, and not up to what he received within the 18 months of his getting. Why? the divine visitation was multiplied. Amen. Amen. He received the early rain, but for, for the productive uh, venture of taking unto himself a full-grown fruit, he must receive the latter rain. So God knows our infirmities. He knows our weaknesses. And as we, as, as we, have, we get more light and we begin to pray, he walks in us. Knowing the human frailty. That's the meaning of verse 15 of Hebrews 4. So natural weaknesses only turn on the help of my all-powerful and uncompassionate high priest. He makes me a winner all the time as I learn to lean on him and his word. Yes, in the heavenly places located in the written world, all the spiritual blessings are stored, ready for release to growing faith. What is the growing faith? A faith that is continually exercise. You give thanks to God and you keep asking. That is in matters that pertain to you and the Lord. We're expecting things you need in the arena of that. But in the arena of the battle, it is already something fought and won by the Lord. And you are enforcing his victory and you are celebrating the victory of Christ and enforcing the defeat of the enemy. Say amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I have the ability to stand in victory in the raging warfare. So what we have seen, we want to particularize to this last aspect. This is the sixth one. It is a reality that belongs to us because of our new creation status. And we just read it, and that was it. I have the ability to stand always in victory in the raging warfare. Yes, I'm able to put the ability to walk at any time. Because of being in constant vital fellowship. Because I'm, very, very, I'm, not, I'm not calling this, the word of truth to oppression remotely. Not from residual knowledge, but for a knowledge that is current. Because I'm constantly in fellowship with the Lord. The word is, is bubbling within me. And as I give vent to it, it goes with all force. Triggering divine missiles that will compel the enemy to succumb. The enemy will succumb in our war. Down, 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 Satan. It's not only a chorus, it's a reality. He will be forced out of the human race in degrees, as the Lord has shown us in another connection. But each time he will decline and we will increase. The Lord bless you. Yes. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Combined to ensure my being always clothed with the armor of God, but also with his presence. Never forget his presence that's round about you. Amen? His armor. That makes you to be able to stand. He says, put therefore the whole armor of God that you might be able to walk, stand. So the man that is clothed with man is the man in Christ. But the armor is the armor of God. And vital fellowship with him 
gets it in place, but secures the presence, that house of light that is you, you are brought into the marvelous light and helps you to win the victory. We have been winning, we will continue to win. And Numbers 31 tells us there will be no casualty. In Jesus' name, amen.